Upadaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Uti Namane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Mirisesa Sunyavadi Pastyat Yare Satarine Panchakalpa Tarugas Chakri Pasindu Devacha Itanam Pavane Gyo Vaishnavyanam Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Iti Namine Shri Varsha Banabi Devi Daite Kripabdaye Krishna Sambandha Vigyanam Daine Pramave Namaha Vadur Ojwala Premadya Shri Rupa Nuga Bhakti Dasi Gaura Karuna Shakti Vigrahaya Namastate Namaste Gorvani Shri Murtaye Dinatarine Rupanuga Virurapa Siddhanta Dwanta Harine Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Srivasari Gaur Bhakti Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So um, it's very important day today Srila Prabhupada, our spiritual master, spoke at least five different times in five different areas of the world on the appearance of his spiritual master. To honor Srila Prabhupada's spiritual master is a great service to Srila Prabhupada because, as they say, if you love one who loves someone who is dear to you, that person becomes even more dear. So we are trying to honor the appearance of this Mahapurush. Uh, we spoke in December on his disappearance. And now we have what is called Avirbhav. There is Avirbhav and Tirubhav. Avirbhav means appearance, Tirubhav means disappearance. So we are honoring his disappear appearance. He appeared at February 6th, 1874 at 3.30 in the afternoon. He was born in Sri Jagannath Puri to the fifth, as the fifth son to Srila Bhakti Vinod Dakor, who at that time, along with his wife, Bhagavati Devi was living in Jagannath Puri. You can still see the house there. It's now a grand temple on Grand Road. <laughs> it's the same route that Jagannath takes during the Rathri Yatra festival. It passes by the house of Srila Bhakti Vinata Thakur. At that time, Bhakti Vinata Thakur was a magistrate in the British Raj, but he also had a service to uh, organize the temple functions of Jagannath Temple, Jagannath's Temple. And so because of his strict and very expert organization, the uh, quality of all the offerings and services to Jagannath increased. So he became very, what we say, recognized as someone who did wonderful service to Lord Jagannath. Um, one time when he was gone, his son, who had been born six months earlier, it was time for the Rathayatra. And so the carts went along Grand Road, and it just so happened that Jagannath's cart stopped right in front of the house of Srila Bhaktivinoda Kaur. Bhagavi Devi, the mother of uh, Bhakti Siddhanta, who was, who was known as Bhimala, Bhimala Prashad, she came out with the child who was only six months old and wanting to get blessings from Jagannath for her child, she placed the child at the lotus feet of Lord Jagannath. After a few minutes, the, the garland, that was around the neck of Jagannath, which is a very big garland, 
was Jagannath is about two meters high, <coughs> fell, and it landed in a circle right around the little baby, Bhima Prashad. Um, his, his mother noted that to be very auspicious, and when she told her father upon returning, he could understand because he had prayed. He had prayed to the Lord, please send someone from your personal entourage to assist in this preaching of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement. Because at that time, Lord Chaitanya's movement had become obscure and had become overshadowed by what is called ah sampradayas those who were not bona fide sampradayas there were 13 recognized groups at the town time Ao, Bao, Sakivedi, uh, Jad Goswami, uh, uh, Sahajya, uh, uh, Nityananda Vamsa, uh, Gauranga Nagaris, uh, Shine, so many, so many bogus groups, all claiming some allegiance to the process of bhakti and Lord Chaitanya, but they had twisted everything around quite drastically. So Lord Chaitanya's movement was being propagated practically alone by Bhakti Vinod Thakur. So he prayed to send someone. And that prayer was answered in the form of his illustrious son, who became practically the greatest philosophical scholar in the history of Gaudiya Vaishnavas, outside of Jiva Goswami, Vashila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati. And of course, his growing up, we had talked about that many times before, was centered around devotion to Krishna. Um, when he was only four years old, he inadvertently took a mango that was meant to be offered by Lord Jagannath. And uh, his father, uh, mildly scolded the child saying that this uh, this is not good what this mango was meant to be offered to the deity and now you have taken but it wasn't like a big offense because it was a four-year-old child but when bhakti siddhanta heard that at that age you can imagine the quality of his consciousness he took a vow never in his life to ever eat mangoes again. Many times throughout his life, uh, people would bring mangoes. Mangoes were quite profuse during the mango season, which usually starts in May of every year. And when the mangoes are really in profuse, they become so sweet and people make mango from everything. They make different kind of preparations using mangoes, drinks, and just and mango everything, it becomes the feature. And those of you who've had it mangoes in India, you know the quality of these. But because of his vow, he would always say, no, I'm sorry, I cannot accept mango. I am a fender. He kept that vow his whole life. He never took another mango. So, that was a strong vow. Uh, as he grew up, you know, he became, he, his father could see he was brilliant. And so at the age of seven, he gave him a deity of Korma to worship. And then he was also learning prayers to Lord Nishringadev and regularly chanting the Maha Mantra. He was a brilliant child. Uh, of course, Prabhupada would say about his spiritual master, he was a walking encyclopedia. Whatever he, whatever knowledge he ever took in, he never forgot it. When he was going to college, he would go to the libraries and read all the books in the libraries. 
and he could memorize and remember everything he ever read. He was a nice sticky brahmachari, that means he had no connection with women at any time in his life. Mm -hmm. He was very strict in that regard. Uh, one time, one of his, uh, the daughter of one of his female, one of his disciples, she wanted to speak with him. And, you know, he was quite elderly and she was just a young girl. So he said, yes, you can speak. She said, no, no, Guru Maharaj, I want to speak to you in private. He said, that is not possible. Whatever you have to say, you can say. So he was very strict in association with the opposite sex and he maintained that, that etiquette and that respect throughout his whole life. So um, although I spoke so much about Bhakti Siddhanta in our first, uh, his disappearance day, I wanted to give a little different angle on today's um, presentation and mention, this is called the Upadesh Savali, and this was by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. So what I'm going to do, these are a series of 24 different statements about Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. So please listen carefully. And at any time, any of the devotees who are out there listening, you can stop me and ask a question or make a comment on whatever I say. I may also try to describe a little bit about what is being said, but generally I'll just read. So if you find something interesting or something, some, some thought enters your mind based on what is being spoken, you may uh, immediately uh, Unmute yourself and ask a question or make a comment. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, uh, sorry to interrupt you. Um, I found a text um, on Google. Can I share it on screen? Can I share um, it? Well, I have it in hard copy. I'm looking at it. I'm holding it in my hand here. It's, all, it's also on my computer. I'd have to get to it, though. Um, let's see. I found in Google, Gurmara, I found in website. Uh, shall I share it on screen for devotees? There's two different versions, and not two different versions, there's two different listings. I would like to follow the one that I have. So mm -hmm. let me see what you have, and then we can... Uh, yes, I don't want the devotees to see the next one while I'm reading the one before that. That's okay. the um, that's okay. idea. I don't want people reading down the list. Because I want them to concentrate on what I what is being said at the time. Okay, good. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Okay. So I'll read slow. Param Vijayate Sri Krishna Sankirtanam. Supreme victory to the congregational chanting of Krishna's names. This is the Gaudiya Ma's sole object of worship. Well, that's his first statement. Number two, Sri Krishna, who is Visaya Vigraha, or the object of the devotee's love, is the sole enjoyer, and all others are to be enjoyed by him. So we are known as Prakriti, to be enjoyed, and he is Purusha, the enjoyer. So all living entities are created in order to give pleasure to the Lord, that is our actual nature. And that is our actual success and happiness in life, to give pleasure to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Number three, those who don't perform Hari Bhajan are ignorant and murderers of their own soul. Those who do not perform Hari Bhajan and glorification of Lord Hari Krishna are ignorant and murderers of their own soul because the soul's nature is to glorify the Lord. Number four, the acceptance of Harinam 
and direct realization of Bhagavan are one and the same. The acceptance of Harinam and the direct realization of Bhagavan are one and the same. So we realize the Lord in different ways, but if we realize him through Harinam, that is direct realization. Those who equate the demigods with Vishnu are unable to serve Bhagavan. So there are many devas. There are 33 million devas, along with 33 million of their consorts. They're all married. So there's 33, 33 million uh, demigods and 33 million demigoddesses. Those who equate the demigods with Vishnu, put them on the same level, they cannot serve. And this is quite fashionable for certain classes of people to worship the demigods and then worship the Lord also and think that the, that same worship, that said the worship is actually the same or equal. Uh, number six, establishing a printing press to print devotional books and preaching by organization Nam Ahat programs constitute genuine service to Sri Dham Mayapur. Hmm. So um, printing books and organizing programs. This is service to Lord Chaitanya. Srila uh, Prabhupada made book printing and book distribution his main objective in bringing Krishna consciousness to the world. He, when he got the printing presses, he bought two printing presses at a very low price. And then the presses were, were going 24 hours a day, practically printing transcendental literature produced by Srila Prabhupada. And Prabhupada, said anyone who distributes my books becomes very, very dear. And because this knowledge is what is missing in society. People have knowledge of everything. They also have a lot of knowledge of what is not knowledge, <laughs> misknowledge or misinformation or just useless stuff. But this knowledge, <clears throat> In transcendental knowledge is the elixir, is the medicine for curing the ills of the misdirected society. So therefore, that service is great service to print books, to write books, to print books, to distribute books, and to hold programs on Krishna consciousness. This is one thing that Srila Prabhupada writes in his Bhagavatam that devotees who are living in homes with families should regularly have programs, invite preachers to come and speak about Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, and uh, have kirtan and distribute Krishna Prasadam. If the householders do this, then they will be seen and also feel that their life is non-different than any other ashram. In other words, their home becomes a temple, a mandir, and their, their life becomes uh, merciful in distributing Krishna consciousness to others. Okay, number seven, we are not doers of good or bad deeds. We are not doers of good or bad deeds, nor are we scholars or illiterate. Carrying the shoes of Hari's pure devotees as our duty, we are initiates into the mantras Kirtaniya Sadalahi. So this is a statement of pure humility. We're not known as being good do doers of good deeds or great scholars or whatever. We're simply humble Vaishnavas who like to serve devotees. 
and find great pleasure in that. Number eight. Yeah, okay. Please accept my humble obeisances. Our glories to Srila Prabhupada and our glories to you. Uh, this point you mentioned now, uh, that we are not great scholars, I've heard this point uh, many times, but um, we also uh, very much uh, stress the importance of hearing. Uh, so how, do, how does this, uh, this two come together? Hearing is a process of purification. <laughs> when you're hearing, you're getting purified. That's one of the nine angas of bhakti, shravanam. So that's the basis for all activities in devotional service. So therefore, it says, you know, one should hear 24 hours a day. Because one is becoming purified just by connect, disconnecting with transcendental sound vibration. And as far as scholars are concerned, there are devotees who are very scholarly and knowing the Shastras, but that's not our identity. That's simply a service that is done in order to distribute knowledge to people in general. Mm -hmm. So it's quite opposite. There's no connection to the two. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so just to clarify if I, if I understand it uh, properly, so uh, when, when we, we read or hear, then uh, we don't, uh, our, our goal is not to, to gather information, but uh, we do it as service. The hearing is purifying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember one time, this was something. Um, I came, I sat in the class, I sat in the back of the room for one very elevated devotee. And I knew whatever he said was going to be really, really interesting and powerful. So I was thinking in my mind, um, boy, I'm going to learn some points in his class so I can use it in my lectures. This is what I was thinking. He sits down. And before he begins his class, he said, now we should not be in the mood to hear in order to get some ideas on how we can speak later. <laughs> in other words, he, Krishna in the heart just directed him in, to smash my idea immediately. So the idea of sitting in the class and hearing is to get purified. The knowledge is purifying, the sound vibration is purifying. Thank you very much. It's, it's very, very helpful because again and again, I, I notice myself uh, approaching uh, reading and hearing, like uh, collecting information, like but it's, it's no, no, not really no. about that. <laughs> Yeah, if you get something, that's nice, but that's not that's not the mood that you should be hearing in or reading in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, it's it's really nice. Thank you very much. Uh, Krishna. Hare Krishna. So Guru Maharaj, just to clarify, what should be the mood when we enter into the class to hear a speaker? What uh, attitude we should have? That I can learn something that will increase the quality of my devotion, will increase the, the quality of my devotional service. So why was it wrong for you to think that I'm going to learn something which I will be able to later on use? That's, that's part of it, but that shouldn't be the main thing. The main thing is to get purified. Shrinvata Swakata Krishna Purnya Shravana Kirtanaha Ridanto Yas Yapadrani Vidyanoti Hus Rit Satan. Krishna purifies a person in the heart who has an, an eagerness to hear his messages when properly heard and chanted. So yeah, we want to learn what is being said. But 
that's secondary. Sec first is the uh, purification of the heart that comes by the process of hearing. Just like, well, of course, we have we have different opinions on this amongst even leaders. But Prabhupada didn't like devotees taking notes while he was speaking. He said, just hear, that's all. He stopped devotees from taking notes. <clears throat> and there are devotees now who are leaders who don't stop the devotees from taking notes. And there's some who encourage that. But that was Prabhupada because just because he was thinking if you, you're taking notes, you're missing things. You're actually focusing on a few things. And what Prabhupada was also saying is that every word is equally important. So why take notes when it's all equally important? But here, here with complete attention, and if you learn something from the class, good. Keep it in mind, repeat it. But if you're there to collect information, then you're in the wrong mood because the receptivity <coughs> will be blocked by your by that mood. Because when a great person speaks, or when a person speaks, you have to catch not only what is being said, but in the mood it's being said and in the context that it's being said. But the right. mood is the most important. Mood yes, is the most important. Yeah, ahead. but if you learn something from the class, something that's outstanding, then great. That's great. This is so important to understand these points. Thank you so much for clarifying them. Okay. So we'll go on to number eight. Preaching without following proper conduct falls within the category of karma, mundane activity. Without criticizing the nature of others, one should correct oneself. This is my personal instruction. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're telling other people what to do, but we're not up to the standard. Better to forget that and better to work on yourself. That will be a greater gain. So there is achar and there is prachar. And then there's sadachar. Mm -hmm. Prachar is mm -hmm. speaking and sadachar is Vaishnava etiquette or behavior. So one has to follow the behavior and that will make the potency of what one is speaking much more effective. Sometimes they say, you know, I can't hear what you're saying because your actions speak louder than your words. So one should be an example. So Vaishnav culture, Vaishnav behavior is superior to philosophical knowledge. But if you can combine both, that's perfection. Because there are people who behave by their, they, they preach by their behavior and there are those who preach by words. But if you combine them both, then that's the idea. But out of the two, Pre preaching by behavior is superior because people will see your behavior in relationship to what you say. Okay. 
serving the Vrajabhasis who felt great separation from Krishna when he left Raja to reside in Mathura is our supreme constitutional occupation. Hmm. So our mood is, to, is the mood of Vrindavan as exhibited by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the mood of separation. This is very important to understand. We're not in the mood of meeting Krishna. We're meeting, in, we're in the mood of serving Krishna in the mood of separation. Krishna may come to meet his devotee, but um, it's not that the devotee becomes eager and thinking that if I do this, then Krishna will, will, will appear to me or I'll be Krishna conscious. The mood is separation. And that separation is enhanced by reading about the separation of the residents of Vrindavan from Krishna. That separation is enhanced by offering prayers in the mood of separation or offering prayers that are, are in the mood of separation. So Lord Chaitanya taught this mood as the, uh, as the mood of our society to worship Krishna feeling the separation Okay, so number 10, if we desire to follow an auspicious course in life, then disregarding the theories of even countless people, we should, he we should hear instructions only from a transcendental source. If we desire to follow it in an auspicious course in life, then disregarding the theories of even countless people, we should hear instructions only from a transcendental source. Yeah, so that transcendental source ultimately is connected to Krishna. And that's what it means to be transcendental. So there's so much going on in the world. And there are many people who present themselves as being spiritualists. They have an academic understanding of scriptures and they don't, they don't actually follow the process of bhakti, but they study bhakti scriptures. They learn bhakti scriptures. They can write papers about bhakti scriptures. They become secular authorities on bhakti, but we didn't, their knowledge is useless because it's like licking the bottle of, a honey, of honey. You don't get any of the sweetness because they don't practice devotional service. Therefore, we can reject what they say, even though it may sound okay. Because we have our sources. We have our sources. So we don't need to go to these other sources. That's the point. Uh, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, may I have a question uh, it's sort of connected to this but uh, i i understand it's not really this point that even amongst uh, devotees uh, i found myself in a situation that uh, we have different uh, levels of understanding and uh, and sometimes uh, even i i was in a situation that i i made a mistake uh, saying some uh, i mean about phil philosophy so I didn't have a proper understanding about something. And if I uh, tell this to some, someone else, uh, he or she may go on thinking like, like this is the truth. And, and I also was on the other side of the story that uh, I've heard something from someone and it wasn't true. So how can we avoid this situation that amongst devotees, we, uh, we, have some misconceptions about philosophy. Yeah, you can question whatever you hear. Just question the authority. That's all. Well, where, if someone says tells you something, you ask them, "Where did you hear that from?" Mm -hmm. If it's a if it's an if it's an ordinary matter, then you want to know well where did he got it from, whether the person is reputable or not, or you know the situation or not. If it's something philosophical or, or uh, scripture, uh, uh, yeah, philosophical, it should be backed up by scripture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, 
It's uh, ask, very nice that. Mm -hmm. They just ask, where did you get, where's this knowledge coming from? Yeah. Yes, thank you very much. Simple. Uh, life, number 11, life as an animal, bird, insect, or any of the other countless thousands of species is acceptable, but taking shelter of deceit is thoroughly improper. Only an honest person possesses real auspiciousness. Hmm. Only an honest person possesses real auspiciousness. So honesty is also uh, supported by acting in conjunction with the instructions of the spiritual teachers, the scriptures, and the great souls, and having a working knowledge of why you do what you do. Why do we do what we do? It's not like, well, why do we do what we do? Well, because I'm told to do it. Well, that's, that's nice, but then again, who told you and what is the authority? So the devotee, sorry, excuse me, the devotee should have a clear understanding of everything they say and why they say it. What is the purpose? What is the support of what they say? And so there is no uh, confusion or, yeah, no confusion or no doubts. Deceit. Deceit means, well, I'm trying to get something by twisting the truth around so I can fulfill a particular desire. That's deceit. He said life and the lower species is more desirable than being deceitful. Okay, number 12, simple heartedness is synonymous with Vaishnavism. Servants of Paramahansa Vaishnav should be simple hearted, a quality that makes them the topmost Brahmanas. So simple heartedness, mm -hmm. what you see is what you get. In other words, the Bodhi is not trying to gain anything from any situation. They're always in the mood of trying to serve and trying to educate, trying to assist, trying to learn. They're not trying to, uh, you know, present themselves in one way in order to get something from that presentation. Mm -hmm. Devotee simple. Okay, number 13, helping to draw conditioned souls away from their perverted attachment to this material energy is the greatest compassion. If even one soul is rescued from the from Mahamaya's fortress, that compassionate act is infinitely more benevolent than the construction of unlimited hospitals. Mm -hmm. Guru Maharaj, would you please kindly read that one again? Yeah, <clears throat> helping to draw conditioned souls away from their perverted attachment to this material energy is the greatest compassion. If even one soul is rescued from Mahamaya's fortress, that compassionate act is infinitely more benevolent than the construction of unlimited hospitals. Comment? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, Anuradha here. Please accept my humble obeisances. I grace to share Prabhupada. I always do Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami. Um, um, I just read um, the book about compassion, about what compassion in Vaishnavism is from Basatva Rupa Maharaj. 
And I found very nice um, thoughts and I write down, um, actually, I didn't know actually what compassion actually is. Now I, I'm reading this book and now it's like click, like, ah, this is compassion. Like, um, actually, I have so much misconception about compassion. Now I see when I read this book, what actually mean, what means compassion? toward um, or living entities and what is the connection uh, between uh, the public succession and uh, um, with souls and heart uh, mm -hmm. um, yeah uh, sorry <laughs> what, what is yeah. the connect what is the connection between? Um, uh, the fallen condition souls and what um, uh, what actually compassion is toward um, all living entities like uh, what, what, how to compassion is the heart of bhakti it's the essence of our process Krishna is compassionate and that's his nature he's compassionate because he comes to the material world to distribute his mercy Compassion means to feel for someone else's situation and try to help that person as compassion. Therefore, preaching is the expression of compassion. And I want just to add that really, like you said previously, that we... Oh, uh, follow Guru Sadh and Shastra that it is based on the Vedic knowledge, knowledge from Guru Parampara, I mean, from uh, established yeah. succession. Right. Yeah, that's our guideline, Guru Sadh and Shastra. And the most important is Shastra, but we can't always directly connect with Shastra through reading, so therefore we have to hear Shastra from Guru. Mm -hmm. The Guru is the compassionate nature of the Lord. That is his position. He's the friendly, compassionate, caring, merciful nature of the Supreme Lord. That is Guru. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Okay, continue. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I would just like to uh, clarify that uh, particular point was it's better to help a soul come closer to even one soul to come closer to Krishna than opening hundreds of hospitals. Is that right? Yeah. Wow. Yes. If you save one soul from the cycle of birth and death, what do you, yeah. That's the greatest compassion. And catering or facilitating the needs of the body might be required, but that cannot be compared to anything like bringing a soul back to Krishna. Okay. Next one. We have not come to this world to be construction workers. We are the bearers of Sri Chaitanya Dev's instructions. Okay. We will not remain in this world for long. And by profusely performing Hari Kirtan, upon relishing these material bodies, we will experience the, I'm sorry, upon relinquishing these material bodies, we will experience the ultimate reward of embodied life. So here, again, the glories of Harinam is being 
And so we're not going to be here long. So what are we going to do when we're here? Just keep this body going? That's nice. But Harinam Kirtan will be the happiness that we receive. Number 16, the foot does it. Now, if I were to desist from lecturing about the absolute truth due to being fearful that some listeners may be displeased, I would be de deviating from the path of Vedic truth and accepting the path of untruth. I would become one who's immutable to the Vedas. An atheist and will no longer have faith in Bhagavan, the embodiment of all truth. Okay, so we'll stop here. These are some of the maxims of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, little phrases of transcendental truth or principles by which one lives by. So today is a very holy day. Uh, Devotees should take some time. Srila Prabhupada has given at least five different lectures in five different places on the parents' day of his Guru Maharaj. So you can find them easily online. Thank All you. Right. And tomorrow I'll also speak about Bhakti Siddhanta. I don't think I did justice to this great soul simply by what I was able to speak today. So we'll make it two days for Bhakti Siddhanta. So tomorrow we'll also uh, speak on him. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. Any final questions or comments? Everyone fasts to noon, half day fast today. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much, uh, Guru Maharaj, for enlightening us on this uh, um, beautiful points uh, given by Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. Thank you so much. Yeah, there um, was a few more, which I'll, I'll take tomorrow, and plus we'll get into some other subjects. You. Have your questions ready. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All oh, glories to Srila Prabhupada. Um, it was such an enlivening class today, Guru Maharaj. Um, just more a comment than a question. It, I just thought it was really interesting, your point about not um, taking notes during class, because personally, I that's something I always do, like in almost every single class I listen to. And... Um, the reason why I do it is because I remember Prabhupada also said that in the age of Kali, to remember means to write things down. So I, I suppose maybe we can get into the habit of maybe after class, um, you know, just jotting down everything we remember. It's just, it's a difficult adjustment because the memory really isn't so great. And so maybe the, I just wanted to know if there was another sort of essence behind the instruction, like maybe, um, you know, don't appear to be distracted in front of the speaker or, or like you no, said. Prabhupada's point was you're not continuously hearing if you're writing down. That was Prabhupada's point. It's not that the writing down is bad. It's just that it breaks up your, your train of, you know, you're, you're writing down something and then the talk is still going on. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, if you miss a couple words, you could miss a whole point, you know. Yeah, it's just interesting because I know, for example, whenever I have to give class, I always, you know, listen to other classes to um, get some ideas and some points. So it's a, 
it's a good thing to sort of think about. It's okay, but if you come if you come to uh, to get a information, then that's one thing. But if you're actually there sitting in class, then it's a different thing when you have a live speaker. If you're turning out a particular class so you could hear and get and gather some information, that's fine. I also do that. I listen to certain classes and I write down points. What I but I've changed now. What I do is I, when I hear classes or when I I'm reading, I'll, own, I'll I won't divert my attention away until something hits me. Then I'll write it down. I'm not looking for something specific or in that mood. But if something hits me, then I write it down. Thank you, Garmesh. Um, and if it's okay, just one more quick reflection. Um, yeah. I, I love the point that Srila Bhakti Siddhanta made about just bring you know one soul back to Krishna, and it's better than opening hundreds of hospitals. And immediately my mind went to the Bhakti Vedanta Hospital, which, as you know, is a project of His Holiness Radhana Swami. And um, it's just so nice the way in the early days he was criticized, and it's so nice the way he explains that it's such a different project. It's not a mundane welfare activity, the Bhaktivedanta Hospital, because through that project is the execution of both Varnashram as well as bringing literally thousands of people to Krishna. So um, I think it's just nice to note that we can engage in these. Obviously, we're not empowered like Radhanath Maharaj's, but we can engage in such projects as long as the goal is to bring people back to Krishna. So I just thought it was a nice, just a reflection that came to me as you read that point. Yeah. What, uh, what people are saying is that just opening mundane hospitals, but if you, op if you have a medium by which Krishna consciousness can be given, then these projects actually have beneficial, just like Bhakti, Bhakti Chiru Maharaj made a whole video show on the life of Srila Prabhupada. And Prabhupada said making movies are, you know, are not our program, but he made movies about Prabhupada, so. <laughs> So you have to understand Prabhupada in context and not simply apply it carte blanche and think, well, that's the, that's correct, you know. You have to understand. And whatever, if the goal is Krishna consciousness, then we can accept the means as long as the means don't deviate from the principles, that's all. Yes, thank you, Maharaj. Radhanath Maharaj says that um, the Bhaktivedanta Hospital is like a temple, and our temples are like hospitals. Um, yeah, it, it, it is a temple. Mm -hmm. They have deities there. They have a deity room with two big sets of Lord Jagannath. You can visit the deities, and there's worship going on. And there's offerings going on. There is, uh, uh, in every room, there's two dials where you can turn on one is Prabhupada chanting Japa and the other one is Prabhupada speaking. And sometimes they have Prabhupada's bhajans. At two or three times a day, all the, all the staff workers break. They come in the assembly in the middle of the big room in the, on the first floor and they offer, they chant prayers and someone will stop and speak a few words and they'll do that two or three times a day. Yeah. So it's a spiritual project, yeah. Mm -hmm. Devotees wear tilak. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dharmaraj Hare Krishna. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I'm piggybacking on Radha Bhakti's observation that I also write, uh, you know, notes while the class is going on. That's something I've done for years. I never even heard this. Continue, continue, continue. continue. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, continue. Yeah, because... 
You have to understand things in context. Mm -hmm. For you, I think it would be good if you continue to take notes. And there's even, you know, even sitting in Radha Swami's classes, devotees take notes. They have their pads. They have their books full of notes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Uh, we'll Thank you very much. Um, any devotees have any more questions or comments? I think it's like there are no more questions or comments, Guru Maharaj. I think we can end the call here, maybe. Thank you very much. Thank you very Tomorrow much. we'll do some more on Shri Bhakti Siddhanta. I think I want to continue to speak about this great personality. Today we just did. A small, small portion. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much for your wonderful appreciation, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Thank you all the uh, voting. Um, last question, Guru Maharaj. For the, for the feast that we will be preparing in the afternoon to offer, is there anything in particular that uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Maharaj liked that we can prepare and offer? He liked Erdal. Oh. What? Urda. Urda. <laughs> I'm so happy to hear that. Make some Muraddal Bundas. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, thank you. Muraddal, yeah, that was his favorite. And he always liked things salty. So, <laughs> so I don't know how you would balance that one out, but anyway. <laughs> well, we can make Dai Vadas. We can make does and offer it with some nice chutney or something. Yeah. Don't give him mangoes, though. <laughs> yes, good. I'll remember that. Okay. So all glories to the seven devotees. Vancha Kalpa, Karupas Cha, Kripasindu, Cha. Itanam Pavane Bio, Vaishnava Bio, Namaha Namaha, Gor Bhakta Vinda Ki Jai, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Ki Jai, Guru Maharaj Ki Jai. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Guru. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna.